answer is Jesus. Amen. You know, we look at the things in the world, things that are happening, things that are happening to our friends, our families, our own lives, and we have one answer for all of it. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what an answer. Answers every question. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? If that doesn't bring a joy into your heart, I don't know what's not what's gonna Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. I, know. I just love that name. <laughs> Jesus. The Lord said we we're gonna have a good meeting today. <laughs> Yeah. We're, we're always going to have a good meeting when we lift up the name of Jesus, amen? For oh, the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I love that name. Jesus, the name above all names. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. He's the name above all names. Jesus. Every name that's ever been named has no power compared to the name of Jesus. You know, the cripple at the gate beautiful was lifted when they mentioned the name of Jesus. Silver and gold have I not, but what I have I give unto you. The name of Jesus. Get up. Get up. Get up and walk. Amen. I got to tell you, I get excited. Last week we had a, when we left here, we ended up um, having to go do a meeting at an old convent, um, a monastery actually, a monkery. <laughs> Down at Glen Osmond Road there, you know, at the top of that. And we stayed there that night and did a couple of meetings. We did a night meeting in the, in the morning one. We had miracles there. We had miracles there. It was just the most beautiful thing. And, you know, Sister L that we're praying for, our Vietnamese sister who's had cancer for three years, um, she, she went, forewent the uh, chemo because she was pregnant and brought forth a beautiful little baby. And um, baby girl, wasn't it, niece? Yep. Just, just a beautiful baby. And... Uh, Ended up in a hospice last week where they didn't expect her to survive. But she heard the meeting was on and she got him to take her there. And uh, we were walking through the foyer. Oh, I, get it, I get overjoyed when I think about this. <laughs> um, we're walking through the foyer and um, she, said, oh, she said, pray, pray for me. So we prayed for her. We ended up praying for her right there and then as we walked through. This was before the meeting started. And the power of God hit her. She wasn't able, hardly able to speak at all. She'd gotten to the point of being so weak she could hardly talk. And she couldn't walk. Her skin was yellow. And we prayed. And the power of God came down on that girl as we started praying for her. It, it hit her. The skin colour changed. The joy of God came on her, that wonderful joy that comes through that name, that name of our Lord. The power in that name, we don't realise what we carry. I've got to tell you, you don't realise what you're carrying. And you've been entrusted with the name of Jesus. Next thing she starts talking, she gets up and she walks. The power of God just hit her. Just, you could see it was a tangible power of God hitting a person. It was just the most beautiful thing, wasn't it? And uh, she went for a walk with Denise in the garden, walked 500 yards, decided to stay for the meeting. She was only going to come for prayer. You couldn't stop the joy in this girl's heart. You couldn't stop the joy that poured into her heart. It was the most beautiful thing. Her son came to the Lord from it, 18 years old. He, he turned to Jesus that day. He could hardly speak a word of English. We saw the power of God and that did the trick. And then we had revival. It was just amazing. Those people, we ended up with about nine people filled with the Holy Spirit. We had salvations. It was just the most out, beautiful outpouring of God's mercy in that place. So we came back charged up. Faith. 
faith. The just shall live by faith. Do you know we've got to act in faith? We've got to push ourselves past our, our understandings or even our ability to do anything. We have no ability other than God when it comes to the supernatural. We can't fake it. We can't do anything with it. It's the Spirit of God that does it. And when he turns up, he touches people's hearts, changes their lives, brings miracles, heals them, delivers them. And we saw all of that last week. It was the most fantastic thing. Praise God. I don't like going away from here a lot these days. We used to travel a lot and do a lot of international stuff and and I know it's coming that we're going to have to start doing stuff like that again um, because that's a, that's a call on our lives. But I want, to, I want to share faith with you. Faith. Without it, we can't please God. Hebrews 11, verse 4. Without faith, we can... Oh, let's open that up, shall we? Praise God. Do you like faith preaching? Yes. I do. I love it. It picks people up. Do you know, so many people in this place are heavy-hearted, but I want to tell you there's an act of faith. And when you're going through things, all it is it's doing, it's building your faith. It's actually holding you close to him. You feel like you're losing your faith, that's when you're building your faith. Do you realise that? When things are happening and hope is starting to sink in your heart, press in, get hold of the word of God that's going to anchor you there and keep pushing in. You're in spiritual warfare. Your faith level is being taken through the ceiling, through the roof. And, and the end result is going to be faith, faith, by which you're pleasing God. <laughs> and not only are you pleasing God, you're ending up with the joy in your heart. Got two people sitting at the back here. I look at you. They had an accident three years ago now, two years ago. Should have been dead. Laid out in the hospital six months. Huh? Four months? Okay, sorry. I kept it there longer than I thought. <laughs> four months. I remember those four months. Those four long months. And your faith carried you through. Father, I just thank you. Your faith kept you going. I, I'll never forget the pair of you. They separated you in that hospital, but you're both speaking the same thing. A marvellous thing. <laughs> using the Word of God and speaking it out to everybody in that hospital. Most amazing thing. And then that lady next to you, there's another faith woman. Praise God. How, how, many, how many situations have you gone through with your health lately? Five, six? Terrible things. Here they are sitting there at the back there with big grins on their faces, pushing through, overcomers. God's coming back for overcomers, you know. And you've got to have something to overcome if you're going to be an overcomer. So don't think it a bad thing when you're going through stuff. All you're doing, you're being strengthened. God's not going to let you perish in that. You're not going to test your faith to the point you're going to fail. <laughs> your faith is getting tested, and it needs to be tested. Faith needs to be tested. This place here, I'll never forget, he told us to buy it, to buy 36 acres of land when we had not one skerrig in our pocket, not a penny. In fact, we were wondering where our next meal was coming from at the time. <laughs> he told us to go buy land for his work. And I'll never forget that day. We were down the bottom of the paddock, down the corner at the auction. What people didn't know is for... Seven or eight days before, I walked around this land every morning claiming it. And on the seventh day, I walked around it seven times. And something broke in the spirit, and I felt it. I felt it break, and I knew the land was ours. You know how I knew? Because he told me. He spoke to me. He speaks. You know, the word of knowledge is one of the most faith-building gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you hear God speak something to you that you shouldn't even know. He spoke, he's been speaking to me this week through the, these words, the just shall live by faith. But four or five times over the last week, I get into my car, 
333. I wake up in the middle of the night, I look at the clock, 333. I speak to someone, they're speaking to me about 333. Everywhere I've been going this week, 333 has been jumping out at me. Someone has spoken about it. Well, those, those numbers just keep coming up. And that Jeremiah 333 is God's phone number. <laughs> Do you know that? And he's saying, ask of me. Ask of me and I'll show you great and mighty things you know not of. Every one of your situations has got an answer. And the phone number is 333. <laughs> Ask of him. Jeremiah 333. Ask and, and wait. People say, that's okay for you. You're not going through so much suffering. I've been waiting a long time, but I want to tell you, Abraham waited a long time. 25 years he waited for the promise that God gave him of a son that would lead God's people. There would be the beginning of God's people. 25 years he waited. My God, what a test of faith. His faith was tested. How was it tested? He had to wait. He had to wait. He had to wait. The test of waiting. How many of you have been going through the test of waiting? I've asked for something and it's not working. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up. Start speaking over your over your weight. The Spirit of God is my healer. Amen. Actually, the Spirit of God's here right now. While I'm talking, I can sense this wonderful presence. What are you waiting for? But those people who have been waiting, think you've been waiting too long, stick your hands up. There's about five of you who have stubbornly been waiting for something and you don't think it's turning up. Just stand up right now, will you? Just those people, just those people. Put your hands up. Oh, actually, you may as well all, all of you, you may as well stand up. There's only three or four of you left. <laughs> God's going to touch you right now. <laughs> He's here, that's why. He's here. He's here. Oh, just wait. See, the waiting test is here right now. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Now! <laughs> just wait. Just wait. There's another wave coming. Oh. oh, there he is again. Now! Oh. Just wait. Just wait. Oh, there, just receive him now. Okay. That's the place of glory. Reach in and get your miracle now. Reach in and get your miracle right now. I shall supply your needs according to my riches in glory, says the Lord. I will supply your needs according to my riches in glory. Reach in. He's here now. And he belongs to you. And everything that belongs to him belongs to you. Every promise is yes and amen to you. Reach in. Reach in. Get hold of it. Get hold of your promise. What have you been waiting for? Just stop a second. You reach in right now. There's something coming to you. Just reach in right now. There's something coming to you. God says today is your day. Today is your day. Close your eyes. This the Spirit of God's here right now. My hand is upon your family, says the Spirit of God. My hand is upon your family. Nothing is impossible to me. And I've heard your prayers and I've heard your cries, says the Holy Spirit. And I'm working in their lives. I'm working in their hearts right now. I changed the heart of Pharaoh 
and I can change the heart of your daughter, says the Spirit of God, where love will flow. Love will start to flow. I'm taking out the heart of flesh and putting in a heart of the Spirit. I'm giving them a new heart. Miracles are starting to break out. I want to tell you miracles are starting to break out. We're on the verge of miracles breaking out with God. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord. If you think you're going through a huge test, it's because you're coming through with flying colours. You're coming through with flying colours. It's always darkest before daylight, always. He's coming through for you. He's teaching his people that faith is going to release them. Faith overcomes the world, says the Spirit of God. Faith overcomes the world. Faith in Christ, not just faith in anything. Faith in the Lord Jesus overcomes the world. He overcomes the world. Didn't he overcome the Hittites and the Jebusites when the Israelites were claiming their lands? They were coming up against great armies and they released great faith. They acted on what God said. They acted on the word of God. They acted on the word of God. God's word is coming down here. Even as you've got your hands up, I want to tell you, you're punching through into that place of glory where every need is met. Every need is met. Every need is met. But God says, in that suffering, in that time of waiting, in that time of testing, I've been strengthening you with a purpose. With a purpose, says the Lord. And my purpose is that you hold on to what I give you. Hold on to what you have. Fight for what I give you, says the Lord. Fight to hold on. Don't let anyone rob you of what I've given you, says the Lord. That fight of faith, that waiting has strengthened you to be able to fight. Strengthened you. To be able to fight, says the Lord. Strengthened you to hang on. Strengthened you so you won't be robbed. Because your inheritance will be contested, says the Lord. Your inheritance will be contested. Be strong, be bold, says the Lord. Take courage. Be bold and be strong and take courage for I'm bringing you through. There is nothing that you have been tested with that I don't show you a door by which you can escape. I'll save you, says the Lord. My promise to you is salvation and I will save you, says the Spirit of God. Jesus has paid the price. Your Lord and Master Jesus has paid the price. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Yeah. And it was three o'clock. Yeah, the Lord, closer, yeah, the Lord told me that I was his. Yeah. And that the Holy Spirit was going to work on me. But he said, there's other people that I'm going to uh, work with. And he said, I'm getting them ready for that. Because he said, I want them in my kingdom. But he also said, get rid of your fears. Amen. <laughs> he did confirm what you're saying. Yes, amen. Amen. Fear is the dead opposite of faith. You just got to look, see what they've done with the world. A little disease, eh? And they control masses. 
The power of the media and IT these days, that social media, sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? You know, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, we were told not to eat of it, <laughs> but we do. It's interesting, I got an Apple computer, got an apple with a chunk out of it. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> yeah, revelation sometimes. <laughs> revelation. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I took some notes. I don't know if I want to preach out of my notes. So. <laughs> Faith. Faith. Hath God said, let's go to Luke 18, shall we? Hath God said, the rotten devil will try to rob your faith. Luke 4. Is it Luke 4, 4, 7? Luke 4, 18, Luke 4, 7. Here we go. Praise God. Mate, I miss Bricky. Bricky's on his honeymoon. It's his, uh, it's his first year anniversary of his wedding. So they've, they've gone to Adelaide to have some time alone. But I miss his glasses. <laughs> yeah, give me, give me a look. See what, are they reading glasses? <laughs> are they all right? No, that, 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 that will work. I'm staring right. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> oh, mate, they're not bad. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Where was he? Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. Actually, now there's something in that. I, I brought that up the other day. You know, when you're going through, through an experience and, uh, and hardship and temptations and the enemy's attacking you in so many different areas, resist the devil and he has to flee. Amen? You know, I think I shared a couple of weeks ago about a testimony when I was in Singapore in a church I went to on their 40th anniversary. And, um, and there's something in 40, being tempted for 40 days. Amen? Being tempted for 40 days. You know, the enemy is known as Beelzebub. That's the devil's name. Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. Okay? A fly's lifespan is 40 days. <laughs> resist the devil, or resist the problem you're going through 40 days, you'll have victory. Does that help? Resist. 40 days. You'll overcome the rotten, foul devil. Forty days. You want to get set free of stuff? Actually, there's something symbolic in, in, in the number 40 in the Bible. You hear it time and time again. These are nice glasses. I'm going to nick them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> being tempted for 40 days by the devil in those days he ate nothing and afterwards when they had ended he was hungry and the devil said to him if you're the son of God command this stone to become bread but Jesus answered him saying it's written man shall not live by bread alone but every word of God every word of God another another uh, Version is every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Proceedeth. That's a funny word, proceedeth. It means it's an ongoing word that keeps coming down. It's a rima word, a rima word. The word of God will set you free. The word of God will empower you to overcome. The word of God will give you the patience to wait for your miracle. The word of God is the promise of God. By his great and precious promises, I become a partaker of the very nature of God. 2 Peter 1 3. Just say that. By his word, I become a partaker 
of the very nature of God. Oh, let those words sink into you. The very nature of God comes upon you because of the word of God. The word of God permeates you. You know when he says, put on Jesus in uh, Ephesians 5, 9, 8. Put Jesus on. Amen. Get dressed from above. That's what you were doing before. You're allowing the glory cloud to come on you. I shall supply your needs according to my riches in glory. In glory. I could give you testimony after testimony where our supply has been out of that glory. This place, when we went to that auction to buy this place, my knees were knocking. I didn't have, I, I, you know, people think, yeah, it's okay for you, you're a faith dude. I've got to tell you, every time is as hard as the next time. <laughs> I need to go through faith and reach it if I want a healing or if I want a car or if I want restoration or I want someone delivered, I still got to act in faith. It's faith that releases. It's faith that brings life to me. It's faith. By faith through grace. Grace is poured out upon me. That's how I was saved. By faith. I believed. Someone told me about Jesus. I th- I got to tell you, some people are really hard on Catholics. Don't be hard on anybody who preaches Jesus Christ. <laughs> Get rid of all your barriers, Catholics, Protestants. You know, the Catholic and Christian faith is one faith. Some of them haven't come to the revelation of the Holy Spirit filling them yet. <laughs> but they'll grow into it. They'll see it. They'll, want it. they'll run for it in, the, in time. I've got to tell you, years ago, when did we go to Spain, to uh, San Diego? 2012? We went, we went to Spain to a place called Santiago de Compostela. We took our musos with us. We took uh, Janine and Phil that were here, and they'd been here with us about 20 odd years at the time. Uh, Peter Young, anybody remember Peter Young? He was one of our early musos, and we took him with us. And, uh, and Johani, he was a Finnish prophet who turned up here out of the blue. <laughs> uh, God sent him, heard about us in Malaysia and, and uh, Singapore, so he turned up on the block. And he used to come for the tent meetings. <laughs> and uh, he was organising a convocation in Spain to pull down some strongholds um, of Catholicism in a town where they were worshipping their, their salvation by trekking across the Pyrenees. And today the world still does this. All the New Ages go there. They think there's power in doing this. They go to a place called Santiago de Compostela, and it's right up the top, just above Portugal, to the top left-hand corner of Spain. And every highway, they even built highways, major, major six-lane highways right across Europe for people to be able to get to this place. So all the New Ages are Shirley MacLaine, that actress, anybody remember her? She, she was a New Age guru. She used to speak about it everywhere she went and people would go. And uh, so we went as a convocation of musos and prayers. I think, how many of us? 16, 17? How many? How many? Eight carloads, so more than that, 30. <laughs> right. Turned up and we went there and uh, we pulled down strongholds all over that place. Now, It's the most shocking thing to see. Millions, the year we went was the year of uh, Jacob. Or um, what's another word for Jacob? Jehovah, yeah, Jehovah, uh, no. Who's who's the apostle? James. James, Apostle James. They reverence his body. It's in a cathedral in Santiago de Compostela. People go there. And I think that if they trek across Europe and and walk, sometimes it takes them three months. They carry a a staff with a shell on it. 
and um, they call it El Camino. And people from all over the world, 12 million people did that trek that year that we were there, thinking that if they did the trek and they got to the eastern gate of the church at Santiago de Compostela, they would be saved. And when they get there, the excesses that they practice, they get booze, they practice, the place is, <laughs> it's just one big party town <laughs> in the end, right? We went there to break the power of that stronghold, the delusion that people would get saved by going to that. And, and we, we prayed. Now, we, I haven't heard much about that place since. Uh, it's the most beautiful little town you've ever seen. It's... Um, it's an old medieval place with everything is stone, cobbled stones, cobbled walls, big castle, and the whole town's within this castle. But it's a beautiful place, and um, but such evil coming out of it. And so many people have a go at the Catholic Church because they don't rectify <laughs> the doctrine. But I still want to tell you, lots of those people believe in Christ. They've been taught Christ. So I, I don't knock other religions, other Christian religions. Mate, I don't care if they're Baptist, Pentecostal. Oh, I've got to tell you, us Pentecostals are as bad as anybody else. <laughs> Anglicans, and they can. Protestants, Methodists. <laughs> we have a go at others. It's like we put up these fences and we're supposed to be helping each other, praying for each other. I don't, I don't care what they name themselves. All I know is Christ knows those who are his. And it's relational. And you teach them it's relational. And more than teach them, demonstrate. Demonstrate. Oh, we were in these meetings last week and I had an interrupter, uh, an interpreter. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she was interrupting. <laughs> she was a lovely lady, wasn't she? but slow as a wet week, <laughs> very slow interpreting and not always getting it right because you'd get corrected by the boss <laughs> who also spoke. And so I was making, I was having fun, I was stirring her up and I said, you're too slow, I'm going to, I can't do this, I'm going to demonstrate. I said, Lord, can I have a word? And he just gave me a word and he said, um, two women here, their innermost secret is they want babies. I said, there's two women here, please stand up. And they're bashful, they're very bashful, the Thai people. There's, no one got up. I said, okay, I'm going to have to tell you who you are. It's you and you. <laughs> and these two women said, yeah. Got up bawling their eyes out. I didn't want anyone to know. I said, well, God knows. He wants to tell you you're going to have a baby. Praise God. He knows everything. Well, all of a sudden, everybody's on edge. <laughs> but they weren't supposed to be. But they, then they all wanted a word of knowledge. Actually, even as we're speaking this, there's people in this room, you want a word of knowledge. And I'm not going to give you one. I keep telling them I'm not a gypsy. <laughs> but God is here, you know. And if he wants me to speak something to you, he will. But we need to demonstrate to the world that we're Christians, that God knows them. I'm going to pray today that he release that word of knowledge in this place for every one of you. I, I think it's the best gift of the lot. I mean, I'm prejudiced because I, I like moving in it. But I want to tell you, oh, glory to God. Anna, close your eyes. Praise God. The place I send you to, says the Lord, is a desert. <laughs> is a desert. But I'm going to send you there and I've trained you in asking because I've revealed to you certain things. And I'm going to send you there and I'm going to reveal to you the very innermost secrets of strangers and their hearts. And I'm going to use you through this gifting, says the Spirit of God, where people will be drawn to you and you will have a move a move of God in the hospital to which I send you, says the Lord. You have a move of God in that hospital 
and even wards will be cleaned out because of the anointing I'm going to bring upon you. Set your heart for this, says the Holy Spirit. And understand, yeah, actually receive it now, girl, you've got it right now, there you go. Revelation knowledge is going to be poured out upon you, that gift, that gift of revelation knowledge. He says, you're one who's bold. I've made you bold. I've caused you to overcome. And you are a faith warrior, says the Spirit of God. You are a faith warrior. You'll go where angels fear to tread, says the Spirit of God, and have done in the past. You've been fearful to go places and still overcame your fear to serve me, says the Lord, and I've taken you and I've trained you. And I've taken you over the waters, says the Spirit of God, and trained you in those places where it's been lonely and it's been hard at times. But that's your training. And the place I'm going to take you next, you'll see revival and that word of knowledge will flow through your life and it will become your stamp. It will become your credential, says the Lord. Your credential will be my word of knowledge. People will know I've sent you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else want that? I'd grab it if I were you, but she's got it. It's on her life. Amen. It's on her life. I've got to tell you, you're going to see it. You're going to hear this. You're going to hear what comes of this. Amen. There's a young lady turned up here the other week, Monday, one Monday night. She sent me a message. She, she got so transformed, she was being delivered on her way home, screaming, crying, laughing, the whole game but <laughs> of stuff. That word set her free. And she sent me a message. She said, I've been bound for many years and no one, I wasn't going to let anyone through. <laughs> she said, but I'm free. She said, I'm free from something that's been tying me down for years. See, the prophetic word, the word of the Rima word, spoken and released, is powerful and it'll do the trick. But you're going to need faith to release it. You know, you're going to be telling people stuff that they know, their innermost secrets. I remember, I'll give you a little exercise. I'm sorry, I, everything's changing in here. <laughs> That tends to be in this place. But it's by faith you're going to have to act on these things, okay? The Holy Spirit, I wanted to hear him sharply. And I wanted an exercise to be able to hear him sharply. And I was down at uh, Basham's Beach. That was another one of our little prayer spots. Belly and I used to go there about four in the morning and meet. And um, I asked, I said, Lord, we need to hear your, your voice much more sharply. I, you know, like people who guess this stuff, Christians who guess this stuff, I just don't like that. <laughs> it's, when you're going to give something, give it with clarity, give it with detail. It's not an airy-fairy thing, okay? When God speaks, it's detail. He wants to do something. And I said, Lord, I want to hear your voice. I said, what can I do? He said, I want to teach you. He said, play hide and seek with belly, your partner, your prayer partner, right? Play hide and seek. So I said to him, I said, Alan, I said, um, God said we can sharpen our hearing by playing hide and seek. He said, yeah. He said, how are we going to do that? I said, well, tomorrow you go and hide anywhere within 30 k's of this place and 10 k's inland. And I'm going to ask God where you are and I'm going to find you and get you, all right? And, um, but that was my act of faith. He told me hide and seek. I just, I've got to tell you, I'm very creative. <laughs> and I said, okay. So that night I'm excited because Jeremiah 33.3 says, ask of me and I'll show you great and mighty things you know not of. An act of faith. So I'm in my prayer time, three o'clock in the morning, and I said to him, Lord, I want to be cheeky. That's my nature, okay? I want to be cheeky. I want to be waiting for him at the place he's going to. <laughs> All right? 
That's doubling down. <laughs> Making it impossible, okay? But I want to be waiting for him. And God speaks a word to me and he says, Rosetta. Oh, the joy that filled my heart. As soon as he said that, my natural mind clicks in and I know the belly has got a brother-in-law who owns Rosetta Rural Agencies <laughs> in Victor Harbour. And I know the belly goes there quite regularly to have a cup of coffee in the morning. So immediately I get Rosetta. Oh, he's down there having a cup of with his cousin, Rosetta Rural Agencies. That was the name of the agency. So I went to bed happy as Larry. I wake up, 8 o'clock, get ready. I'm going to be down at the rural agencies about 10 to 9 waiting for Belly to get there. And on the way there, the Holy Spirit speaks to me and he said these words and they shocked me. And he said, Raph, why have you stopped listening? And I went, what? He said, why have you stopped listening? I said, I haven't. I, I came, I've asked you, you give me an answer. He said, yeah, you got so excited you ran off, you didn't listen to me. I didn't finish my sentence. I said, what was the rest of it? He said, and then he gave me a geography lesson. He says, Rosetta Head is the name of the bluff. And I said, are you kidding? I always knew it as the bluff. Anybody else know it as anything else? Yeah? It's known as the bluff, though, generally. And uh, I stopped. I opened up my street directory at the back, some map, and there in brackets, the bluff, the geographical name is Rosetta Head. I go, oh, now I'm going to be late. That's the other side of <laughs> Victor, right? So now I'm speeding. He said, don't do that. He said, listen. He said, don't stop listening. The lesson is don't stop listening. Well, oh, that's the last thing. He just spoke to me just then. He's speaking to me right now. Oh. Don't stop listening is the lesson. It's a lesson for a lot of us here. I want to tell you, God misses some of you <laughs> in that prayer closet. Don't stop listening, okay? Praise God, serious business. You might just miss the very thing you were born for. <laughs> Don't stop listening. Yeah. That was the lesson. So this is refreshing me, okay, sorry, I'm preaching to myself. If you guys get anything today, you're laughing. <laughs> Don't stop listening. Don't stop listening. And I'm thinking, how do I not stop? How do I stay in that listening place? And I put the worship on. I put the worship on. And as I came to Renown Avenue, right on the corner of Rosetta Rural Agencies, he told me to stop and turn right and go to Alan Bell's house. And then he said, Raph, he's changed his mind. He was going to be at Rosetta Head, but it was a stinking hot day. He changed his mind. He was going to work from home and pretend he wasn't there. So therefore I went and knocked on his door. At one minute to nine, I waited, knocked on the door right on nine o'clock. I said, okay, open the door. And no answer. Dead silence. And I said, Belly, open the door or I will knock it down. <laughs> and he knows me. <laughs> so he opened it. And he looked at me. He said, how did you hear that quickly? I said, I actually knew where you were going to be. You were going to be at Ros Rosetta Head at the bluff. You were going to go up there and hide. But you changed your mind because it was so hot. He started crying. He just bawled his eyes out. He said, that's exactly what happened. I said, yeah, God's exact. God is very, very exact. 
in what he does. And the next day, I went and hid. And after a little while, he found me. He set his heart to listen. And so we started honing our hearing with that little exercise. It's fun too. You know, God makes it fun. So if you've got a prayer partner, play hide and seek. I did this with the YWAMers, you know, when I used to go, thanks, Paul. Pauline's typing out a heap of my old YWAM preachings. They taped them for me on CD. I've got about 20 hours of them. And I'm going to write some books on the principles of hearing and how we heard and that God's principles that we've learned in our own lives, that we've put in the, into practice. And with the YWAMers, I used to get up in the morning and pray before we went to breakfast down there, and I'd ask the Lord, how am I going to teach him today? And he would give me a vision. He gave me a vision of a young girl, very distinct blonde hair. He said, you saw her in the group you're teaching. He said, uh, tomorrow, send her out anywhere on the campus and give her 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go and settle herself in anywhere and sit. Hide if she wants to, but sit somewhere on the campus. And he said, I'm going to show you right now where she's going. <laughs> so I drew a little map of the campus and there was a, an area on the right-hand side facing west, West, was it West? Yep, facing West. And it was an ovaled area and there was some trees there and she was going to be under a specific tree. So I drew it, drew it folded it over, went and I said, today we're going to do a lesson. I said, my faith is getting tested, same as yours. I said, we're all going to ask the Lord where she is and you're going to go out and you're not going to go all over the place looking. You're going to ask first, get a specific area, go and have a look at that and then come straight back. Don't look anywhere else. If she's there, you've done well. If she's not, come back. I'll tell you where she is. And I've got to act by faith because she hasn't told me where she's going to sit. She hasn't told me where she's going. I said, so if you fail, I'm going to show you how easy it is or we'll give you another go. It's a repetition thing. If you come before God and ask of him, he will speak to you. Will he do it immediately? Sometimes no. Sometimes he'll stretch your hearing. There's the patience thing again. Your faith will get stretched. Remember that. It's not always immediate. It's not instant coffee with God. <laughs> Yet sometimes it can be. But sometimes you're going to have to wait. There's a patience factor being built into your faith. Why? Because it's strengthening. I don't know why, but it's a principle of God. It's a law in the spirit. The more you wait, the stronger you're becoming. <laughs> you getting this? Oh, praise God. I, I'm not going to give you my secrets. But I will give you his. The longer you wait, the stronger you're becoming. You hear me in, on Zoom there? <laughs> the longer you wait, the stronger you're getting. Don't give up. Do not waver in your faith. Praise God. That's a word for someone on there. Praise God. Let us hold fast, Hebrews 10.23. Hebrews 10.23 for you today. Wait. Wait. Abraham gets a son. He gets a son. Waits 25 years and he's told to put him to death. <laughs> Stop thinking about that. Here's a double test. <laughs> Your faith will get tested. Sorry, where was I? Wham. YWAM. Those YWAMers. I love them. Well, three of them out of 15 heard God. Three of them out of 15, they had a prayer life. <laughs> you're going to hear clear, Isabel. God says to me, you're going to hear clear, Isabel, because you've got a prayer life, because you go into that place. God says, John 4, 1, 
of something that you've heard from the Lord. The stairs, he says, come up here, and you've gone there. Am I right? That's your scripture. John 4, 1, come up, and I'll show you, and I'll speak with you. You know, so many people <laughs> are stuck on rapture theories. I rapture with God whenever I want to talk with him. <laughs> I go up when I want to speak. Watch. <laughs> God says he loves your painting. <laughs> I just heard that from the Lord. He said, tell Henrietta I love her painting. <laughs> he loves your colours. It's a, it's a mirror of what's in your heart. Praise God. 4.1, Revelations 4.1, heavy revving, Revelation 4.1, he calls you up. Someone read that for me, wouldn't you? for every one of you actually especially for you Sue that's your you know your prayer life has done that he, he's brought you through into the spirit to that point where now he's calling you up to talk and you've heard that from him I'm just confirming it praise God come up here oh thank you Lord yeah Three out of that whole class. And I did it the next day. And, you know, just about the whole class got it. They got in a prayer that night. They started asking with an earnestness and a desire in their heart. And what's the word of God say? Ask, seek, and knock. When you ask with all your heart. Is that what it says? When you ask me with all your heart, seek me with all your heart. Oh, say all. He wants all of me. He doesn't want just a bit. All of me. Seek me with all your heart. Oh, glory to God. One of his nicest promises. Huh? One of my favourites. Don't talk to the devil. <laughs> Do not talk to the devil. No, oh, but I just watch the internet, brother. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> don't talk to the devil. Don't have a conversation with him. He will try to discourage you. There's a battle on for your soul. Don't eat from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Amen? The devil wants to bring suspicion against the word of God. That's how he had to go at Jesus. Jesus, by faith, knew the word of God. He said, get out, rack off, be gone. Man shall not live by anything but the word of God. Amen? That proceeds from the mouth of God. You build your relationship. Build your relationship with Jesus. Amen? Build your relationship. That's our job here. I want to tell you there's an outpouring coming of God's people starting to move in the giftings of God. They're going to be powerful. They're going to be attractive to the world. The world's going to come because of what you've got and reveal. And be bold to speak it out. I want to tell you as you grow in that place of, that, of the, of the uh, closet of God, of the presence of God, boldness is going to come on your life. You're not going to recognise yourself. And he wants to do that. Be strong and be courageous, he says. And speak what I give you to speak. Speak what I'm showing you. Speak my word. Jesus was tempted by the devil. But have a look at the outcome. He came out of that desert after 40 days. He overcame the enemy. 
He overcame the devil. He didn't kill the devil at the time. You know, he could have. Jesus' word was enough to knock the devil out and give him a hiding. He tried three times. He came out around one, battered and bruised. <laughs> that devil, Jesus just gave him a little punch by speaking the word of God. <laughs> I like those boxing <laughs> ideas. And then the middle one, he could have really knocked him out. He didn't. But at the end, he got tired of him. He said, go. But he didn't kill the devil. Do you know he didn't kill the devil? <laughs> he didn't get rid of the devil. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. He didn't, he didn't, because he knew he had to meet him at the cross. He had to defeat him at the cross. It had to be one final blow that killed him that would gain salvation for all of us. Do you realise that? The blow he gave the devil brought salvation to us. And it didn't look like it was a victory. It was, he was dying on the cross. We're Christians, you know. We so often misrepresent what we're looking at and think it should be done our way, not his. <laughs> but his way is always, always, always opposite to our way. Always. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Just Psalm 91, and we'll finish with that. Is this what he told you, Phil, Psalm 91? He told it to you for a reason. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Now I'll get, give you your glasses back in a second. Verses 11 and 12, what's it say? The devil says to him, jump off this pinnacle. And Jesus says, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. And Jesus spoke this. For the devil tempted him on this basis. Remember, the devil knows the word of God, okay? He says, for he shall give his angels charge over you, in verse 11, to keep you in all your ways, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he kept and omitted out 13. Jesus could have hit him with this, he said. He could have said, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. The devil didn't want to speak that word because <laughs> it was about him. <laughs> It was about him. And it was in reference to the temptation he was going to go through in Luke 18. By faith. Just remember, God's already got the plan. He's already told you the answer. His word is the answer. It's always in there. Jesus knew the word, knew how the temptation was coming. But the devil only uses what he wants to use. Lots of Christian people Use only what they want to use in the Word of God. Read the whole Word. Amen. Sorry, I'm not going to ruin you. They're nice glasses, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Father, we just want to thank you. Just put you. Yep. Yeah, but you you got to use wisdom. Yeah, exactly. I know. All right. Wisdom's the key for us as Christians. You know, too many Christians go off half-cocked, half hear what God's saying, don't know timing, don't listen for the timing. Just keep listening. That's the lesson I've learned. I have to keep listening. If I'm going to see results, and we see good results, but everybody can, every Christian's open to this. We need to keep listening and hear God to know what to do with what we get. You know, sometimes he'll tell me stuff and he tells me then to shut up. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. And I, I think, well, can't we smash these dudes? Like, I'm, I'm like Rambo, okay? I'm, I'm a lot like you. Actually. I, if I get something, I get excited. I don't want to use it and belt someone with it. <laughs> I don't mean that way, but you know what I mean. I want to use that word of God and see the result. I'm, I 
am excited to see God's word at work. But if he says, shut up and listen, then I know that's what I've got to do. And I might hold that for years, that word. He's given me stuff that I know that's happened, come to pass in this, on this land here. I used to have people come to me, we bought the land, they'd say, you know, you should do this, this and this and this. And all of it was tied to borrowing. And God said to me, never borrow a cent. He said, if I'm doing this, I will supply according to my riches and glory. Well, everything you see here, the tractors, the, the building, the, the kitchen, the garden, the, the uh, fencing, there's $20,000 worth of fencing this last two years we've put into this place. All of, all of that stuff, you know, like a, a backhoe there worth, well, I think we paid 24, 25 for it, I can't remember now, with a tax on it. All of it supplied. I act in faith, and it takes an act of faith. Most of the time we haven't got that money. But I'll act in faith. We bought the land that way. He told us to buy it. We bought it. Within two months, it was fully paid for. We settled. I asked for 60-day settlement so we didn't have to borrow a thing. Paid for it all on the spot. I was $70 short on the day of settlement. And the broker was, he was panicking because he knew we were faith people. And he'd been pestering me. Have you got the money? Have you got the money? I said, stop worrying. I said, look, I'm not. So if you're doing the worrying, you do, you worry. I said, but on the day it'll be there. And when I got there, he said, did, did you get it all? I said, no, I'm sorry. I'm $70 short. He said, blow that. I'll put that in. So he paid the 70 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, he's a Christian man. But everything we do is by faith. That that JCV out there, Bricky and I were looking to get a, a, another tractor. We needed one with a bucket, and we were, were buying timber at auction to, to build the pergolas and the stuff. And there with the JCVs, actually, you wasn't it your mob that released them? Yeah, yes, they would. That's that's your old job, isn't it? There. <laughs> yeah. Well, mate, at the time I looked at it and I looked at, uh, at uh, Bricky, I said, mate, forget a tractor, we're going to get one of those <laughs> for the land. Big bucket, whatever, you know, and, and much heavier duty than a, a, a agricultural vehicle. And um, so we started looking. Now, I didn't have any money, but about three or four weeks later, someone from the other side of Australia gets his accountant to phone me and say, we're about to put some money in your account. Can you see, give us your account numbers? <laughs> and it's what I needed to buy the JCV. Exactly. Exactly what I needed. I had so much in the bank. He sent me 20, 21, 20. And uh, we went, got the JCV. So blessed by that machine on, on this place. And that's the way we worked with everything. We hear God, we act on what he says, and he releases it. And it comes from everywhere. I, I can't even begin to tell you how it comes. I just had a man from Western Australia phone me, so they must listen on this on the Zoom, you know. But it comes. When I need it, it comes. I'm not dependent on, on the tithes, though we need them to run the place, but I'm not dependent on them. Most churches worry about where their money comes or whether they're in debt or not. I, we're not in debt. We didn't get into debt. We will never get into debt. Everything we need comes from our Lord, everything. And I thank God. And I'd rather work that way because my faith gets built and so will yours because <laughs> you'll see it coming. So, Father, just put your hands up. You're all under arrest. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit for the revelation knowledge to flow in your lives. Amen. And mine. I want more. I'm greedy. I want more, 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 more. And I get greedy. You need a double load, a bucket load where you're going. Thank you, Father. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Father, I just ask for the word of the gift and knowledge to flow in every life in this church, Father. 
every person. You would release prophetic mantles upon your people, Father. Not so they can be called prophets, but that they can walk in the prophetic call, Father. I ask this in Jesus' name. We give you honour and glory, Father God. Pour your spirit out, Father, upon this congregation. Father, you know their needs. Right. We've met their needs already this morning, Lord. Pour your spirit out, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Actually, there are ankles being healed here right now. Some people who've had ankle problems. Who's that? One, two, three, four, five. He's healing ankles right now in this place. Oh, thank you, Father. Just like heat going through your ankles, just move them. Just move them. All the arthritic pain, out in Jesus' name. Get off in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ankles. If you've got an ankle problem, stand up and just get up on your tippy toes, will you? That's it. And you, yeah, hang on the seat in front of you. That's, yeah, your ankle. Your ankle's being healed right now. Thank you, Father. Karamaya, Karavasira. And knee problems. Knee problems. Any pain in that knee? Speak to it right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Commanded to leave you now in the name of Jesus. You've been asking for this. You've been asking the Lord for total healing of that knee. And the doctors have done what they can do, but now I'm going to do what I can do, says the Lord. I'm going to pour my spirit out on your knee. On your knee, says the Spirit of God. I'm pouring my spirit out on your knee. The pain will leave and it'll be a sign, a sign. Oh, there you go of my reconstructing your knee. They've done their best, but I will do better. Amen. Amen. But I will do better, says the Lord. There you go. There's the fire of God going down through your leg, down your thigh, onto your knee right now. Got it? It's yours. Just like a fire, a burning fire in that knee, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I think we're done. I think we're done. Anybody else got a word of knowledge right now? Just close your eyes. Come on, Phil. You got one there? I just, just heard the word clicking hips. Clicking hips. Clicking, in other words, loose hips. Or s joints. Loose hips, sink ships. No. <laughs> Stand up and be healed. That's your act of loose, faith. Stand loose up hips. and Come be on, healed. Yes, amen. Total bone restructuring. Praise God. Total alignment. Thank you, Lord. Everything about it that needs to happen, oh, Jesus you, is doing it. Not man. Yeah. Jesus is doing it. Thank you, Jesus Lord. Jesus is doing it. Amen. Be healed in your hips in Jesus' amen. name. Can amen. you say a word? Can you all say a word? Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> God bless you. There's a bucket there. If you come prepared, that'd be lovely. If not, don't worry. <laughs> hey? Yeah, who's doing the communion? Some, somebody set up. Now, you, should, you better bring a communion message with it, okay? Yeah. Okay. Go on, speak it out. Speak it out. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, I'll give it.
want you to say something. Oh, oh. Yes. Um, this is the blood and the bread of Jesus. Jesus is our life. This is so significant. It is more important than anything else. Because Jesus died on the cross for us. And that is just a miracle that he cared for us so much because he was without sin. But we have sins and he died for our sins. And by his blood we are healed. Thank you. 